My name is Richard Aslan. I'm a professor at the University of Rochester, and I'm the director of the Rochester Baby Lab. The Rochester Baby Lab has been in existence for about 30 years, and we study babies between roughly three months of age and two and a half or three years of age on a variety of tasks. One of the difficulties in studying babies is, of course, that they don't talk until about a year of age, and even then they don't talk very much until they're about two years of age. So if we're trying to study babies who are younger than a year of age, we have to rely on measures of their understanding of things that doesn't involve them speaking. And so one of the techniques we use is to study their visual attention. How do they look at objects in the environment? We present items on a video display screen and determine where the baby directs their attention by how they point their eyes at the objects that are on the screen. Well, I think one of the things that the public doesn't know much about is how incredibly sophisticated babies are. So by using these different techniques in the laboratory that involve more than just observing babies, but actually testing them, we know that they're much brighter, much smarter than we might have given them credit for just by observing their behavior. So for example, in the language domain, we know that they're actually more sophisticated in their language skills, that is their understanding of the sounds of a language than their parents are. They come into the world with very sophisticated abilities to hear the subtle differences between sounds of any language. One of the things we've discovered is that they don't do this randomly. They focus their attention on certain kinds of objects that depict information in the environment that they're able to handle. So what we call this effect is the Goldilocks effect because they look at things that are not too simple and not too complex, but somewhere in between. I think a long-term goal of this lab is to sort of set a baseline for what normal infants are able to do at different ages. And once we can understand that, we can then use those data to compare to infants and young children who are having difficulties in some domain.